Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Ken Gishinga, and I'm the Chief Economist at Mentor Economics. Our work is simply to give uh, our clients mm -hmm. a clear picture of the state of the economy yeah. and also to understand new possibilities um, in the economy. Okay. I believe uh, in the um, idea of giving hope. In as much as we read um, a lot of negative things in the media, yeah. I really believe in trying to identify what are the positive stories mm -hmm. uh, that uh, can really position our economy in Kenya yeah. and businesses such as this to be able to thrive. So I've been an economist uh, most all my career. Yeah. That's what I studied in university. Uh -huh. And that's what I've been working on um, either uh, as a, in the banking sector mm -hmm. or in the last five years at Mentory Economics. So I'm very happy to be here with you. Wow, that's a very rich uh, introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so we're just going to go right into it. We are looking at businesses and uh, our platform, Islands Expressions, we have a lot of um, our audiences are young people and we just want to provide them with the much needed information because everyone um, out there, the whole story is hakuna job, hakuna ma job oko inje, so natunashida tukiambiwa by the leaders. Kama hakuna job, create a business. And we think it is so easy to, you just get money or capital from wherever and boom, biashara and yoyo apo. So how, from the very basic, how do we start, how does someone start a business in Kenya? What do they need? Uh, I think first of all, you've said it very well. Unemployment has been a big issue um, in Kenya. And a lot of people um, have to think about business and entrepreneurship. Uh, but I always say when you start it, keep it simple. In fact, I would say the number one philosophy is keep it simple. Um, when you have an idea or even better, a talent. Yeah. Um, I always say the best businesses are the ones that are founded on your talent. True. So I think true. the first natural place has to be somebody sitting down, doing some soul searching and being able to ask, what is it that I'm good at? What is my talent? And I think from that point on, you get to understand these are the these are the businesses. Yeah. For example, maybe I'm good with um, logistics and organizing events. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to start an events company. So I think the best place to start is to be able to do a bit of soul searching yeah. and to ask yourself, what is my gift? What is my talent? Mm -hmm. And now from that starting point, yeah. you actually now can understand, you know, how do I use this talent now to be able to... Mm -hmm. Um, start a business. So I think that's the first point. I think once you've gotten uh, your talent and your gifts, mm -hmm. now the next step is how do I monetize the gifts. these gifts? So yeah. maybe let's say back to the events planning. Maybe every time we have an event in the house, everybody's saying, oh, wow, you're such a good coordinator of things. Yeah. You know, that tells me maybe I'm good in events planning. Mm -hmm. Maybe now in my neighborhood, I can start I'm helping the neighbors out. Yeah. Every time they have in an the event. small events, yeah. Like, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you start small. I think sometimes the biggest challenge we have is sometimes we think so far ahead that we forget the opportunities are actually right under our nose. Mm -hmm. And that you build your name, you build your brand, and social media is there at least not yeah. to be able to market you far and wide. True. So I think uh, keeping it that simple, I think is uh, one of the best um, techniques in terms of running a business. Okay. Um, we have talked about talent um, and also looking at what we have around us. So now when we, when we get to the nitty-gritty of it, you, you've decided, yes, I am probably good in event management. Um, I have tried and done maybe two, three events, and I think, now on a, hey, up a nice amic. So where do I go from there? Um, so that I'm compliant with the government in... Um, Kanjo is not on my back every other minute. No. So what, what other requirements follow after that? Exactly. And uh, even before you go to the government requirements, it's also good to put down on paper um, your vision. I call it a concept note. Um, to take half an hour, um, pen and paper, yeah. and just write, um, you've done three events for the neighbors, you, you really see there's an opportunity somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's good to write it down because often we forget. Yeah. And you find sometimes somebody is doing events. Next week you find me, I'm selling shoes. <laughs> and next week, because you can be multi-talented. Yeah. And you can be many things. So it's good when you commit something to pen and paper mm -hmm. in your diary. Yeah. It's, it's a reminder that is a commitment there. So yeah. even if 
other things come. It's not that other things are bad, but it helps you remind you what was the vision. Because maybe that day you had an inspiration. It's good to record it. Because maybe when that inspiration goes, yeah, you, you have something to You have to something go to back remind to. you. Exactly. And yeah. I, I wrote it for Mentoria mm-hmm. back in 2015. I refer to it at least a few uh, times every year. Yeah. So I think once you write it down, now it's, it's also good to get a name for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, people have different um, philosophies. I know people who combine their husband and their wife's names. <laughs> yeah, the most basic <laughs> Kenyans, we need to change that. Right, but yeah. I, I think it's also good to have something creative. True. Uh, one thing I saw in the, in the U.S. Um, is the, how you name a company. I think that's one thing in the U.S. they really got it right. It, it, it's able to evoke a certain emotion. Uh, emotion. Yeah. You know, when you think of um, Facebook, it started in a very simple way. Yeah. Or when you think of uh, Twitter mm-hmm. and such, it's it, 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 it sort of like, you know, Twitter is a bad. Yeah. It's, it's always chopping. Yeah. And that's what you do when you tweet, uh, small messages that you send. Yeah, always. So, so I yeah. think also having a creative name mm-hmm. helps. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes when you're, especially let's say you're in events, and there's so many event suppliers, exactly. it helps. When you, you stand a, out. If you have a good name. Yeah. So you take that name to the business search, the government will see if anybody because sometimes you can have a name which 10 other people <laughs> okay. have already booked. Yeah. It's also good to do a search. And if nobody has taken it, it's good to reserve it. Where do you do the search? Uh, normally nowadays, even on the, on the, actually when you go to these uh, eGov websites for okay. uh, the, the Nairobi, I don't know, there's a name for it, the eGov uh, website. Yeah. Normally where they do all the business. Uh, I think government has made an effort in trying to put everything online. Mm-hmm. So when you go to the e-citizen yeah. and all those things, you'll be able to really navigate. They've sort of tried to consolidate it. Okay. So you go to business registration on the e-citizen, mm-hmm. you'll see uh, business search. Yeah. And I think nowadays it's very quick. It's like a day yeah. or something. And I think the registration fee is quite a bit. So it's good to reserve the name. Mm-hmm. But even more than reserving the name, it's also good now, now you think of now forming um, a company around it. Because one of the problems people have is they reserve the name mm-hmm. but they don't create the company. So you realize that you have a reserved name but somebody can come and form a company and use that, that name. name. Exactly. Yeah, because it hasn't still been it, it registered hasn't. fully. Exactly. So yeah. it's very important you think about the structure and and it's also good to work with a business mentor. Okay. And sometimes there are there's so many hurdles. There are people who sometimes work with their lawyers. Mm-hmm. The people who just do it themselves, yeah. they go to the website. Now, at least there is a lot of information, information. on the e-citizen. Yeah. You can see it. But it also helps if you have a business mentor. This is just maybe somebody in your area mm-hmm. who is a bit more established in business. Yeah. In your family, it could be in your network of friends. Mm-hmm. Somebody who has done five, ten years okay. who can guide you. Because there are so many small, small things. That you won't be able to cover in this entire show. In Almost Zoom. every week you'll have a question. Yeah. It's good to have somebody who's at least maybe even 10 years older and to journey with you. To tell mm-hmm. you, oh, what did you do when it came to, is it is it better to have a company or a partnership? Yeah. Or a, There's so many small things that you can't cover in one episode. Yeah. And so having, journeying with uh, somebody who is uh, in business mm. or joining some of these business chapters. Yeah. I see there's a Kenya National Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, Kepsa. Um, there is uh, another one I hear about where they have business chapters. I'm forgetting the name. Uh, BNI, Business mm-hmm. Networking International. Okay. Where they have chapters almost every neighborhood. Yeah. From Kilimani to Kuru, everywhere. Yeah. You know, it's good to join one of these. It's also good to make friends with other people who are in business. Yeah. And stuff. Sometimes, in fact, one of the advices I got when I started business is start surrounding yourself with other people who run businesses because their mindset is different. True, and, and very, that. very true. So, first of all, you have to forget the idea that all your answers will be found in one place. I, I think a lot of people are looking for that website where... Yeah, where everything, everything is, is... You just input, 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 and then, it's bam. A, it's a journey. Yeah. And you'll get advice from Chamber of Commerce. You'll get advice from Business, business Network International. You get advice from your relatives. Yeah. So it's up to you now to listen to all these voices and to say, hmm, I like that approach of naming. Mm-hmm. I like how so and so is dealing with uh, registration. Yeah. I like so it's good to first of all understand that you'll be getting a lot of input from very many areas. So you're not dependent on just, on just one, one. So I think sometimes you just want to have one area, yeah. but that's not the best. Yeah. It's good to 
constantly, and that's the power of networking. True. And networking is a big part of growing a business. Having a coffee with somebody yeah. who you admire in business, and then asking them, how did you deal with, uh, how did you deal with Kajo? Yeah. And hearing their perspective. So it's good to allow multiple voices. But once you have your name and you say you've registered into a company, um, I mean, the documentation you would need are your ID, mm-hmm. um, a PIN, you need uh, KRA PIN. Yeah, KRA PIN. Yes. And, and dealing with KRA is something that's a whole topic. I know, in, yeah. In all this stuff. But I always say, keep it simple. Choose one goal for the week. Mm-hmm. Say, this week, I want to get a good name. Yeah. For the business. Yeah. Talk to people, get an excellent name. Say, so I'm going to call this Josephine Events. Yeah. Done. Mm-hmm. Next week, I want to think of um, uh, registering the company. Okay. So I need, uh, I go to, I can either go to Nyayo House uh, in the CBD mm-hmm. where they have those Huduma centers. Yeah. I can go online. Just say, next week, I have a goal. The key thing is keep small goals and keep doing things every okay. I think sometimes we get overwhelmed. Steps, yeah. We want to do everything in one week yeah. and you end up doing one thing and you become so discouraged. True. And discouragement is one of the biggest enemies of business. But never allow yourself to be discouraged. So I think take one thing, say, now I've registered it, I have a company name, why don't I open a bank account? Mm-hmm. So next week I go, choose a bank, talk to people who run businesses, choose a bank, mm-hmm. open a bank account, and yeah. done. So I think when you do that, in the course of three months, you'll be so surprised at the progress, by, at that the you've, progress made. you've made. Okay, yeah. um, let me move you back a bit. So we have come to, uh, you have already registered, you've looked for a name and everything. Um, there's that part where you have to decide, is it a partnership? Is it a sole proprietorship? And I think a lot of people will just jump into business and they don't know what kind of company they want to form. So um, in very layman's term, yeah, how, how do you come about, how, what, what differences does a sole proprietorship have um, in the other types of businesses that are there? Well, indeed, and that really depends on the nature of the business. Um, let's go back to our events example. Let's say Josephine wants to run the events company. And let's say you just naturally work best alone. You know, maybe you are not really into partnerships. So you register it as a sole entity, sole entrepreneurship. But that does not mean if I wanted to join you in future, that it's, it's, it's cast okay, in stone. Okay. You can always change these structures as you move forward. So no, most, mo- normally most people start it as a sole proprietorship. Mm-hmm. Then maybe sometimes you find two or three of your friends yeah. actually like the idea and they like what you're doing. And they maybe say that we want some shares. Mm-hmm. So now you... They buy, it, in. they buy in and you convert it into a company. Yeah. So the key thing is, again, keeping it simple. What's the starting point? Some people get the idea as a group. Okay. If the idea came as a group, then most likely you need to have a company and all of you need to have shareholding. Okay. So the most normal uh, part form would be either a partnership mm-hmm. where you have a managing partner or if it's a product, you have a company where you're all directors. All right. So you'll find lawyers, sometimes they go with partnerships. Okay. But you'll find most business people go as a company where everybody has a shareholding. Okay. And this is where sometimes now you need to sit down with an expert to say, okay, how do we split the shares? Who's the majority? Who mm-hmm. came up with the idea? Yeah. Now that's what you need to sit down with now a business expert separately to say. Because one challenge you'll find is sometimes you'll have four friends who come together. And I see it very often. Mm-hmm. But you have four friends who come up. Maybe let's say Josephine and her three best friends. Yeah. And you have the events company. But your three friends are employed nine to five. Yet you are doing... I'm the one who is running around with running everything. Around. Yes. But you are, all of you, all your three friends want you to have 25% each. But you see, that can't work. It's because you are yeah. investing... You're spending... Actually, you are the business. Yeah. Because when they I are... I am the face of the business. The anyway. face of the business. Yeah. When they're in their media houses, they're in their banks. Yeah. It's you who's dealing with Kajo. It's you who's dealing with customer complaints. Mm-hmm. So, one important thing is getting the shareholding right. To say, no, no, no. You guys are... You guys are almost... Uh, silent uh, partners. Silent partners. True. Yeah. So, we need to... Make sure the shareholding reflects. <laughs> your Very silence. true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he makes business and and biashara. Yeah, <laughs> that never goes well. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So I think that part of shareholding is so most people will naturally go into a company where there's shareholding. Yeah. So that part of normally the temptation is to make sure everybody has equal uh shareholding. shareholding. But when you really think about it, some people are going to be sweating more than yeah. others. So yeah. it's very important from the very beginning to get their shareholding right. Otherwise, uh, you love your 25% but you're doing 75% of the work. Mm -hmm. And at some point you'll be like, guys, no, this can't work. Yeah. I'm the one. So it's good you get that shareholding, right? It's good, also good to have a legal advisor mm -hmm. who can be helping you file these things. Who can also be your company secretary, yeah. quote unquote, if you like. It's good to have one of your friends who's uh, maybe a legal expert. Normally mm -hmm. lawyers um, um, tend to understand all the legal requirements. It's good to get one of your friends who's a lawyer. Yeah. They don't have to be... Uh, like fully in the, in the business, mm -hmm. but they can be helping you with um, some of the legal aspects around shareholding. If there's a dispute, um, how do you resolve it? Yeah. Sometimes disputes arise and, 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 and that. So that sometimes is the benefits of maybe having uh, some advisor. Okay. Um, so I want to bring it back now to our Kawaida, the person who has just started a Biashara for selling shoes um, by the roadside right. or wants to start selling secondhand clothes in Gikomba right. or, you know, a meanza to Biashara, just a small scale right. Biashara. Right. Um, do they need the lawyers? Do they even have the funds, funding for the lawyers and company secretaries? How, in, how, how are they supposed to navigate this business registration and all these things, especially if they don't have the know-how? Right. Yeah. And There's right. so much red tape. So this is actually one of the biggest uh, challenges I sometimes raise in the media is the amount of red tape that we have. But I like the idea of a um, Mutumba dealer and, and, and that. And the good thing is they even they have associations. Like you'll find like the Mutumba owners associations. So the good thing is these chapters sometimes help them to be able okay. to sort of engage whoever they want to engage as a group. Yeah. It's good to try and be part of a group. So even if you are a Mutumba owner, mm -hmm. try and ask yourself, is there a Mutumba... Uh, network of people yeah. because you'll find what is affecting you is what will affect me. Very true. And, and that. So you'll find even the big uh, membership organizations want to deal with you as a group. Remember mm -hmm. when COVID hit yeah. and a lot of people could not import their Mtumba yeah. into Kenya. Yeah. You see, they had to form their small traders and I think these are small traders association. Mm -hmm. So it's good to, it's always good to be part of a group. Sometimes I think the temptation is to operate as an island where you do your own thing. Yeah, because you want to get it the in the angle. Exactly. But yeah. one thing you'll forget is the challenges that are affecting you are affecting all the other people. So if you're Ram Tumba, it's good to join like the small traders. I think it's what they call the small traders association mm -hmm. where they circulate membership. They say if it's KRA and they have this thing called the minimum tax, yeah. this is how we as a group, this is how we shall be dealing with minimum tax. So you're part of a group. Okay. And it's easier for government to recognize a group than, than, an, entity. than, a, than, a, than an individual. Yeah. So it's uh, always yeah. good to, to be part of, and as much as you're competing, you know, I think sometimes we have such a steep sense of competition that we never even want to see each other. Mm -hmm. But we realize the challenges that are facing us are the same challenges. Very, very true. Whether it's Kajo or governor or, gov or government, the key, the key thing is to try and join the network of traders who are doing Something, something similar, similar. so okay. that you're constant even it can be a whatsapp group you mm -hmm. can say hey let's have a whatsapp group for all the mtumba guys in buruburu yeah you, you join that mm -hmm. so you keep saying okay these are the challenges somebody was having this challenge i think that is a very very important thing for a small trader because as you said a small trader cannot afford a lawyer exactly cannot afford a company, a company secretary. secretary yeah but the society let's say of the buruburu shoe dealers association mm -hmm. they can come together and they invite a legal expert for one hour yeah. to give them, to guide them. a talk. Exactly. Oh, okay. So it's very good to work as a group. As a group, yeah. It's, <laughs> in fact, the smaller you are, the, the more you need to be part, to be part of, of a bigger... Of a okay. Exactly. And I think I've also seen um, organizations also or entities like the Mutumba people, they have groups on Facebook. Yes. I have seen even the Kamkunji guys also bunch together on, in, on groups in, on Facebook, on social media, on WhatsApp. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that, that makes sense. So, you're able to move forward, you know, together. Okay, um, so we have registered the company. 
what what other documentation do we need? We have gotten the company name, the registration. We've gone to KRA. Um, what other documentation is needed? It's also good to open a bank account. Okay, the bank account. And our banks also nowadays have made it very easy mm -hmm. for businesses. You just need to bring now your company a registration form yeah. and uh, the IDs for the directors. Uh, pretty much that's what banks have made it very, very easy yeah. to be able to get and open a bank account because sometimes you'll, you might think you're a small player, but you end up with a big client and that big client has to pay you by your bank. bank, yes, they are not going to give you cash in an envelope. <laughs> yeah. So it's very important uh, that uh, you have a bank account mm -hmm. for a business, yeah. so that at least even the big, you know, if you end up with your part of a sub Safaricom supplier, true. And Safaricom, they have, for example, they've been trying to get suppliers from small small traders, but mm -hmm. they, you have to be able to at least have some basics. Yeah, you have to look legit. Exactly. Yeah. Think of the events organizer. Sometimes you might be part of this small events company. Then you find a big event company has won uh, a bid to do maybe a major event. Yeah. But maybe they don't have enough capacity. So they come to you and say, maybe we'll share this business with you. Mm -hmm. So you need to be ready yeah. for those kind of things. Yeah. So sometimes I think we think we are small, but sometimes you're not too small. Exactly. And you can be part of a greater a greater force. So I think in terms of documentation, mm -hmm. the bank account is important. You have your care pin. Good to have some invoice, maybe design on how you do your invoicing okay, okay. and stuff because you'll do work for the client and they'll ask you, okay, send me an invoice. invoice. And you don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. Yeah. It's also good to have an email account mm -hmm. for, the, for business. the business. Yes. So try and separate your personal Gmail, get a separate one for the business. Mm -hmm. It's just been these events, get that. Yeah. And that's, I think sometimes you find people use their personal. Uh, emails True. for the business. Yeah. Um, it might also help to have a social media page, have um, uh, a page where you can uh, people can interact with you. Mm -hmm. Social media is big these big. days with business. Yeah. yeah. And what's the cost of opening a page? Nothing. It's literally zero. Yeah. And stuff. You might have a, maybe a graphic designer who can do a nice post for you. Mm -hmm. So you realize when you're resourceful, you'll always find a way. Yeah. A big company will hire an agency to manage their social media, but a small trader will get one of these talented graphic designers. Yeah. He might be a, a friend. Yeah, exactly. Or your brother or your sister. That is it. And, yeah. and for them, they're expressing their creativity mm -hmm. into it. So I think resourcefulness yeah. is one of the things that really make good businesses. Okay. Where you think that, wow, I have, such, uh, I have such big barriers ahead of me. But something you tells you, no, but you can always use this path and you can always use that path. So I think that's a very, very important thing. Okay. Wow. All right. So guys, I hope you have taken down all those notes. The very, very important discussion that we're having here with Ken. Um, and I'm loving everything that um, you're breaking it down in very, you know, something that every one of us can understand in very basic language, you know. And... There's been a research that shows that a lot of youth businesses um, don't make it past their third or fifth birthday. Um, what, why is that? Well, there are a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it could just be lack of patience. Sometimes business requires a bit of, you know, think of a farmer. Yeah. A farmer gets the seed. Um, he has to uh, plow it, they plow the land. Um, um, till the seed, he has to nurture, water the seed, and really germinate it. Yeah. That patience of the farmer, I think, is something every business person should learn. I think sometimes uh, we plant the seed, but we fail to water, and uh, we, the tree fails to grow. So I think patience and persistence. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are this events company, nobody knows who you are. You go and pitch, and people are like, okay, what job have you done in the past? You're like, none. They're like, none. They don't have the confidence in you. You can either go home and cry, <laughs> yeah. or you can say, okay, maybe next time mm -hmm. I can sort of uh, angle it in a different way. Yeah. Focus less on my experience and focus more on my new ideas, new yeah. innovative thinking. Yeah. So over time, so persistence is one area. So lack of patience, and we live in a gener what is called the microwave generation where you want everything yeah. right now. Yeah. So back to the idea of the farmer, you know, when you eat those oranges when they're not yet ready, they're very bitter. 
True. And, and such. So I say patience is sometimes a challenge with young people. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is uh, maybe the business model itself has not matured. Maybe you okay. say, yes, I'm good in events, but you've not differentiated yourself from the 10 events companies. Yes, you can have a nice name, mm -hmm. but it's not enough to have a nice name. Yeah. People need to say, okay, so what is your competitive advantage? Is there an angle, a new angle you're introducing, you're introducing or are you just copying the, market, the 10 yeah. other events? And Kenya, we, unfortunately, we have this culture of copy-pasting. Yeah, in fact, that's, uh, that's <laughs> that was actually what I was going to be uh, to ask you. Right. Like, you know, in, if you walk around Moy Avenue, Tomboya, right. you'll find, because um, Ken started a, a shop for selling shoes and right. clothes. Even me, I think I can do it. <laughs> and my cousin can also open next to me. My neighbor and all of you guys are selling the same. So, like, how, how will you uh, stand out from your customers? You know, you have to... Yeah, that's, I think that's what you're talking about, competitive edge. Yeah, it's called the competitive edge or the yeah. competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to your concept. Remember you said writing a concept oh, yeah. note. The concept note, yeah. And that concept note, as you're writing it, don't, it's not just something you sit on and write, but try and talk to people. Try and talk to people and ask them, you're an expert in events. What do you think is a gap in events? Talk to somebody else. What do you think is a gap? Then over time, you'll start and seeing, wow, I've talked to quite a number of people and it seems nobody is doing events maybe for uh, people targeting college students, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. example. Everybody yeah. is doing events targeting corporates, mm -hmm. but nobody is targeting these young guys from campus. And even they have events. Yeah. So why don't I position my company to be able to do events for young campus students? Yeah. So you start marketing now within campuses. You know, we are an events company and we help, we'll help you with your graduation. Mm -hmm. We'll help you. So you find that gap. It's so important to find that gap. As you say, it's so easy to just copy other people. Yeah. But you, it's important to know that they have been known for what they are doing. True. So people need to know what is so different. Why should they come to you? And if you can't answer that, that's normally one of the reasons these businesses don't see their fifth. And but, if you can't, yeah. and it's not something you should answer in day one. But at least over the course of time, you should ask yourself, what is unique? And how do we market our uniqueness? If you don't find that unique factor, then it can be quite... I think sometimes for, for some people it's price. Yeah. For some people it's the target market. Mm -hmm. For some people it's the neighborhood. They're saying in this neighborhood there's no bakery. Yeah. So we want to be the we first want to be bakery. The lead in, exactly. Yeah. Everybody in Buruburu has to go all the way till Point Mall. Yeah. You know, why don't I start one here at Mesora? Yeah. And that. So you find, so every, you have to find something unique. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the reasons many businesses, lack of finding that uniqueness is yeah. actually uh, the lead cause of many businesses collapsing. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what about issues to do with financing? We know a lot of young people, that is one of the, when you actually even watch um, a lot of these shows that are running on TV, trying to help young guys begin their biasharas, the main problem that they're complaining about is capital. How to finance their, their, their dreams and their talent. How do young people um, get financing in this country to start a business? Well, that's a very important uh, point because, and I think it's something that's um, not thought through very well. Because when people are asking for capital, they're asking for capital for the dream business five years ahead. So you say, oh, wow, my events company will be doing clients like the banks and the hotels. So I need 10 million, but you don't really need it today. As I said, how much is it to open a social media page? Zero. Zero. How much yeah. is it to go and register your business, bus fare to town mm -hmm. or a cyber cafe to oh. get a pin? Nowadays, it's on the KRA. It's actually... Free. Like, yeah, it's free. Maybe yeah. you'll just pay your 10 bob for the cyber cafe. Or your to, bundle, and your bundles. On your bundles. Yeah. So if you really think, and that's why I keep asking people, you have to separate what the business needs in five years and what it needs this week. And, and I think that's where we fail. Week. Yeah, we think, That's where we start failing because you're already going to an investor telling them I need 10 million. They are not seeing. They have not even seen what the small one can do. Yeah. And that's why it's important to have something called... Um, what is called a, a prototype, a 
of the business. Mm -hmm. um, there's a word we use. I don't know. It's, I'm forgetting about it. But it's the minimal viable product, the MVP. Mm -hmm. This is the, the smallest instance of your business to prove that it works. The small, because if it, if it works at the smallest phase, mm -hmm. then the investor's work is easy. It's just to give you more money for you to expand. Yeah. But if it doesn't work at the smallest, at the smallest stage, stage. Then even if you pump in money like how, it does not work. Think of a human being. Yeah. And I think the human being is the, one of the best examples. When a baby is conceived and uh, is in the womb, mm -hmm. all the features of the baby actually developed before being born. Yeah. So by the time the baby is being born, it's just a matter of everything is becoming bigger and more established. Yeah. But everything is intact. True. There's no you can have somebody who's now 20 years old and now the ears are starting <laughs> to form. To form yeah. It's just everything has been formed, but it's a very tiny. Growing. No, it's just a matter of developing. Okay. And and but everything has been has been formed. So I think the business you need to think of the business as as the, the child that everything is forming. It's just it's as a small. So if it's marketing, you're not doing the 20 million marketing. Mm -hmm. You're doing your social media free page. Yeah. So when the investor can see the prototype is working. Many investors will actually give you money. The challenge with most people is they have not even proved the concept at a small phase. So you have the events company and you say, I did my research and I saw the gap in the events market mm -hmm. is nobody is targeting young campus students. Yeah. So my business model is to target, to go around campuses and to give them a price point that is student friendly, friendly yeah. and to make a profit. If you can just prove that, it will, even the banks and everybody will be willing. A lot of people do not prove that. That's why funding is so high. So that's why I keep saying, focus on the small prototype. Make the prototype work. Wow. And the beautiful thing about the prototype is it's so cheap. Mm -hmm. so you're dealing, everything is at the unit cost. Okay. So even if you are spending, even on marketing, yeah. coming up with a, a poster and sending it to all these campuses, mm -hmm. that will not cost you more than bundles. And, uh. and, that. and you'll be able to say, with these very little resources, we made a profit. That will bring in big investors who so, can scale it up. Okay. So what you're saying is if I want to start um, Tumba Biashara, um, I've gotten some funds. Uh, maybe I've borrowed from my mom or my dad or my cousins. They've given me some amount. I go, kikosh, get, select my clothes, and then I am putting them out there on Facebook, on Instagram, um, is that now the prototype that you're talking about? I love that example. Uh -huh. And for you, the competitive advantage is you'd say you have a taste for clothes that young people like. Okay. So anybody can go to Gikomba, yeah. but you, when you go, you kind of know the things that the young people are looking for. Exactly. Trendy. Trending. Okay. So just go and get maybe 10 pieces. Yeah. Then you apply. Now you also have maybe you have some social media skills. Mm -hmm. And you apply some social media skills, you put them on Instagram, mm -hmm. and all 10 of them go. Okay. Now you'll be like, oh, wow, I think now we have. And it, it means you have two competitive advantages. Number mm. one, you know how to source very quality things. Yeah. And number two, you know how to market on social media. Okay. And you say, this is a prototype. We got 10 items. Uh, we spent maybe 10K to buy these things, mm -hmm. and we sold them for 20K. Yeah. That is an prototype and if it works trust me it will be so easy let's just be you doing the same thing but now on a on a bigger scale so i think sometimes people fail to prove it at the prototype okay yeah all right guys i hope you hey this wealth of information is reaching <laughs> to you loud and clear and we're really trying to break it down to you know be assured that a young a lot of young people are going for so that's this information is not too much jargon it's something that you can apply to your business. So wherever you are watching us from, if you're at home saying, here, here the notes you should be taking. These are the notes you should be taking. <laughs> and um, from Ken, don't let us, don't let him leave this studio. Yeah? If you haven't asked any question, let me go and check out whether there are any questions. Meanwhile, we are on E underscore squared TV on YouTube. And your comments or your feedback I'm going to be reading them from here. So let me find out the uh, questions that we have. I am actually seeing so many questions that are, are coming in, Ken. Um, 
Caroline is asking, how important is a business plan? And do you think that most businesses fail as a result of guys not putting in the SWOT analysis? Hey, Caroline, umefanya homework. <laughs> SWOT analysis into consideration before starting a business. So I think there we first answer the question, how important is a business plan? It is important, but I don't think we should make it uh, the most important thing. Is it the same as the concept, the concept note, note that you... Okay. The concept note is just two, three paragraphs yeah. on a paper. Uh -huh. The concept note speaks to your heart. Okay. It really says... For example, I remember I used to have a neighbor who was very good in um, selecting handbags. Mm -hmm. In fact, sometimes she would um, come back to the estate without any handbag and people would ask her, where is a handbag? And she would say, you know, people just saw it and they decided to buy it from her. Off Not her, to, off yeah, her off bag. Her. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And she would just put all her things in a paper bag and come home. Not once, not twice, because she had a really good taste mm -hmm. and that. So we told her, I think you have a taste that's for... A, that's a business it's right a business there. It's a business right there. So yeah. she started going to Thailand. Mm -hmm. She started importing bags and her bags were really... To the point where she even set up in a mall. You know, oh, wow. And that she grew up. So she, you see, she, she went from the, the talent. Yeah. There's no writing, <laughs> a business plans, what analysis. Exactly. You can do that yeah. later on. Yeah. But at the fundamental part is the is there talent there? Do you really have a talent? You say you're selling tumbas, mm -hmm. but can you go to Toy and come up with five things that will go today, today, today? Yeah. If you don't have it, it doesn't matter how big your business plan is. <laughs> so it's business plan is important as you're growing as a business. Okay. But the key thing is to see the opportunity opportunity and that one you can see it in in an instant, really in, in an instant. Yeah. so is the opportunity is it visible like this lady used to come home with paper bags all the time until we told her I think you need to start you are too talented <laughs> yeah this is just and this, is, this business is calling you <laughs> exactly actually sometimes I keep saying business is a calling yeah it sometimes is sometimes is there an area where everybody keeps repeating like wow your you hair is always so yeah, good yeah you should start this business exactly yeah. so for me that for me is the origin Mm -hmm. of our business and no matter how many business plans you'll write you'll do your SWOT yeah. analysis and those ones help you when you want to expand Okay. because you'll say okay now I do bugs but how big is the bug market mm -hmm. and what is the price so those things that Carol has mentioned are important but it's not the foundational part the foundational part is is the talent and the opportunity there you're mm -hmm. so good in baking cakes everybody wants to eat your cakes yeah. and you just bake at home that already should tell you that is a business opportunity yeah. right there. Okay. That's even before your documents of writing. So the business plans help. Mm -hmm. Investors, when they come, sometimes they want to see a business plan, but that is much later. Much later. Much, much later, yeah. After you've actually confirmed that this is something that exactly. is that viable. Works. Yeah. All right. Uh, Felix is asking, is there a way I can... <laughs> Felix, is there a way I can legally avoid paying taxes? <laughs> Felix, why, why, why do you want to be on the wrong side of the law? Anyway, um, Ken, this is for you answers. Well, right now, I think the law has introduced what is called the minimum tax on turnover. So if you sell shoes worth 10,000 shillings, the law requires you to pay 3% of that turnover. So 3% of 10,000 shillings would have to remit. I would say, because people complain about carry and taxes, but carry can be a nightmare when you are a business that has been avoiding it for a long time. One of the benefits of being a small business and you're doing small volumes, it means the taxes you're paying are not big. So even if you, if you missed an opportunity, rectifying it is not a big deal. But if you're a mega company and you've not been making payments, carry can just come and Shut you down. So one of the yeah. big things about being a small business, one of the best things is your costs are so low. So yes, your revenues are low, mm -hmm. but even your costs Very are low. also low. So if Kerry says, hey, you've not been paying that 3% 3, 3 of 10,000, you can say, okay, I'll organize yeah. and pay. So start start correct. When the amounts are low, start, start doing there. it. It's so bad for you to go 10 years and now you're as big as butter. You're a big, but now Kerry comes and tells you, now oh, you're big and you've not been paying for 10 years. Oh my so God. can you just write one check? And you're not able to write a check of... In your business. <laughs> <laughs> that business you've been crying. Exactly. You know, yeah. So I always say, well, if you have to make mistakes, 
make them early yeah when the costs are so low okay in fact in the, sometimes people in strategy they're saying fail early you have to fail mm-hmm. fail early yeah. <laughs> and correct yourself early. early because the cost of making a mistake early on is so much smaller yeah. and you can rectify it quicker but if you try and avoid them for like 3 4 5 years yeah, they keep piling oh, they'll come and 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 now you have a business name that everybody recognizes and now your bank account is frozen so even if you start a new business name guys are like we don't know that we know we know this one <laughs> <laughs> exactly so start from a beginning if it even is that 3% just make it it's so much easier yeah. to start on the right foot okay all right um keep your questions coming guys uh brian brian is here saying awesome and deli- delicate topic in our current generation and we are heading to a worse place people who make were internet maniacs <laughs> very true very true brian uh viacom entertainment is asking how much money do i need to start a business Again, starting simple, a business can cost as much as you want it to cost. But if you look at the very basic documents, as I said, the marketing costs nowadays are free in terms of social media, in terms of registering a business, mm-hmm. in terms of really uh, getting KRA PIN. Nowadays, you go to any cyber cafe, they'll do it for you for free. For, for free. Yeah. You'll just maybe the, or you do it on the bundles. Yeah. So the cost of, business, of starting a business actually quite negligible. I think where the costs really start coming in is when you're expanding. But okay. even the costs when they ex- when they're expanding you also your revenue mm-hmm. is expanding. True. And that's an acceptable thing. But really starting it off because some people say what about office space? What about sometimes you ask yourself as an events company you know how big you're mostly at the company you're mostly at the client location. So even what you need You don't need you some don't of these really things. Yeah. So I think sometimes a business will cost as much as you want it to cost. If you want a high-end office in Westlands, <laughs> you'll pay for that. Yeah. If you want a small studio, so it's really up. Mm-hmm. And nowadays you have even these co-working spaces, spaces yeah. that are there True. that have made it even cheaper. So mm-hmm. be resourceful. Do not, because sometimes you find some people have lost their jobs. Yeah. So they've been given uh, this uh, package by the company. Mm-hmm. because they've been working for 10 years. Yeah, the exit package. The exit package. Yeah. And the temptation is to go for that big office in Westlands. Yeah. And everybody's working from home. So you find that big package you are given in six months. It's gone. It's gone and you don't even have a single client. Yeah. And that's why I keep saying, work on the prototype. The prototype is cheap. If the prototype works, expand. Expand. If the prototype is not working, keep working on the <laughs> prototype <laughs> rework 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 the strategy and really it works exactly and okay. it's so much cheaper to work on a prototype mm. than to work on the big thing yeah yeah and <laughs> i mean we are in the in an era where you can work online you work from home pretty much deliver there are so many companies that are actually running delivery services so you're also creating em- uh, employment opportunities for other biasharas as biasharas. well so it's not just you growing you're also growing um another ecosystem that's working um around you okay guys keep your questions coming <laughs> keep them coming we are loving them <laughs> becky is saying she's loving the conversation thank you so much becky and thank you so much for wo- watching um and we are live on e_squared so tell a friend to tell a friend if you know someone who is actually um trying to start a business this is a conversation they should be chiming into and asking um can hear all the questions they need to ask free consultation kabla <laughs> ende where you maximize this opportunity um we have we have um opportunities that the government is also has also been offering like stimulus packages for youth to start businesses just um i think it was this week or last week i saw something about mbele nabiz the government was providing young um youth led businesses with money to you know to start their businesses and grow their businesses um but they have some requirements like you need to be in a group um before you get there are some there are not i'm not i don't think beleda biz was asking for that but other organizations i think like the youth fund or something they ask for you to be in a group before they give you your first seed, seed capital um how how viable is that what if i'm in a, in i want to start a business and i can't find 10 more people who share my vision aren't they 
um, acting as they are blocking some some kind of development for the youth? Um, yes and no. I um, mean, the sense that first it depends on the business that you're doing. Remember, some businesses are you might work as a sole proprietor. Some others you might work as a, as partners or directors in a company. I think um, first of all, it's good to have the information right. And the good thing is the government is trying to put these things on social media. So first of all is to go to the Twitter handles and start following all these things. Understand, okay, this is and Abyss. Yeah. What's the initiative? What's the handle? Yeah. So we start following. I think sometimes we follow so many unnecessary things. I know. And it's, it's about time we start unfollowing things that are not necessary. <laughs> Actually, and I know so many people were seeing, well, they were watching the Mbele and Abyss and they were like, if you went to the NTV or KTN when they were running that story, a lot of people were like, where was this thing inter- <laughs> advertised. <laughs> we are seeing it now and 750,000 youth were sponsored for their businesses. How did people know about that? So that was the main complaint that I actually saw from um, the comment section. Right. Yeah, I think we follow too many unnecessary people. We follow people. all these celebrities Please. and it's important. But you see when you open like your Twitter handle for your business, as you've opened just been events on Twitter, don't start following the things you follow as a person. Follow the things that are important. To your business. To the business. Yes. So sometimes you find there's a very gray line between your personal life and, and your business. business life. So you find uh, in your business life, you're following Banner Boy. You know, you're following all these things. Yeah. That are not, <laughs> that are not really. related to the business. Exactly. Yeah. So ask yourself, and this is where you work with your social media person, follow the things around government youth things. Mm-hmm. So follow um, Bell and Abyss. Yeah. Follow all the handles that are relevant. So at least once a week, you're always getting feeds. Updates, because if you're following yeah. other uh, re- re- relevant things, those things always disappear in the background. In fact, I think a business Twitter handle should be very strict mm-hmm. on following the things that are only useful for the business. So you're yeah. right. And the government has so many arms. You have the Youth Fund, you have the Belen Abyss, you have the one they did with Centum, mm-hmm. uh, something for Bijana. So it's easy to forget them because there are so many. Yeah. It's easy to even confuse the requirements. So start following them on Twitter, with your pen and paper, you know, start uh, diarizing mm-hmm. or start, you know, sometimes people say, I don't have a diary, I don't have time. What, Our phones. What I do sometimes <laughs> is, I sometimes WhatsApp myself. Oh, wow. I have okay. my account yeah. and I take notes and mm-hmm. I WhatsApp. It's so much easier because sometimes you're somewhere and you don't have your diary, yeah. but you have importance. So sometimes I actually WhatsApp important things. Then mm-hmm. maybe on the weekend, I look at all the things that I was up myself. I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that was a good point. So sometimes be creative. Mm-hmm. And so to say, I saw Mbele and Abyss. Okay, this time I missed out. But maybe there's a next window in another six months. Yeah. I need to be ready. Or that another grant months. that's being offered by another arm of the government. Exactly. Yeah. But you, can, you need to make time for the research for this. You need to say at least one hour in a week, mm. uh, I go on my Twitter page where I'm following the right things and see the updates. Yeah. Because nowadays, Government is really trying to make use. Uduma Center, all these things. Follow all these things. Then you'll be able to get the information. Some will support you as a group. Mm-hmm. And it's up to you to ask yourself, you know, are you, are the other people as passionate? Because you don't want to bring in 10 people who yeah, hate events. they'll kill your you dream. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They can't stand events. Yeah. You know, in fact, they'll tell you events is what, the worst business. So you don't want naysayers yeah. on, 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 on your group. But if you find there are a couple of friends who have never thought about it, they kind of like the idea of events. Mm-hmm. You can bring them in and you can drop them in. But the challenge again is are they coming in as silent partners or are they okay. coming in as the ones more? So it's important before you bring in, especially when the idea came to you alone. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes the idea comes to you as a group. Yeah. It's not really a group. Yeah. Idea. But if it came to you alone, it means you have to sell the idea. And if you're selling to it to all somebody, those nine people, yeah. And I was just talking this uh, morning to a friend of mine who had quite a nasty experience Mm -hmm. with a foreign investor who came in and really gave him a hard time Mm -hmm. in terms of the demands, in terms of, though I really, you know, we talk of patient capital. Yeah. This was the most impatient of capital. So also sizing the, the, I told him, wow, that was a nasty experience. They had to do a bit of arbitration. But uh, I told him in future, try and even interview potential investors. You can have a friend and you you love having pizzas together, yeah. but say, this is business. Actually, let's have, let me interview you next week, Monday. Mm-hmm. I know socially you, you've liked the concept, 
for now next as week. A business I need partner, to sit down yes. with you as a business and for 40 minutes I interview I know you as a friend. Yeah. I know I need to know you as an investor. What are your expectations? And like, oh, I want to make a million in the first year. Already. Mm-hmm. That's a challenge, yeah. you know. So sometimes I think we, 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 we take what is happening in the social space almost directly to the business arena. But you, we find that brings a lot of mistakes. So you, even if it's a friend, you're bringing them on board, tell them, I need to interview you. For 40 mm-hmm. minutes or one hour, yeah. really now as a business to business to see whether you're a good fit. Because you can be a good fit socially, yeah. but maybe not a good yeah, fit. Sure, otherwise, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you have an interview and you say, based on the interview, I don't think fit in. I still like you as a friend, yeah. <laughs> but just based on where you want to go and where I want to go as a business, mm-hmm. it's not matching. And you have to be open to yeah. this kind of conversation. No hard feelings. It's much better than two months later or six months later, you're exactly. all taking each other to court and yeah. even your friendship is breaking apart, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, true, yeah. true. Yeah. Okay, um, before we wind up this conversation, I think it would be unwise to wrap up without knowing what are the mistakes that young people make, apart from also not having the patience, what are the mistakes that a lot of young people are making in business today? One of the biggest mistakes is lack of consistency. Um, so yes, you said you want to be an events person, mm-hmm. Uh, but um, I see you next week. You're already selling shoes. I see you the other week. So I think lack of and a brand. You have yeah. to know a brand is a promise. So if somebody sees you as events, they want to see. You know, they follow your pages. You are doing things of events. They want to see consistency. So one okay. of the biggest challenges is because we are naturally multi-talented. Yeah. So it's so easy to see. Oh wow! So and so has opened a bakery. <laughs> I also now want to do a bit of bakery and a bit of events. Yeah. So and so is good with uh, music. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe I should also open. So I think consistency is one of the another challenge that a lot of people face. Lack yeah. of consistency. Mm-hmm. Then I think uh, so. I've talked about uh, maybe the patience. Yeah. We've talked about um, uh, co- lack of consistency. Uh, maybe we've also talked about your products. Are you constantly innovating? Sometimes people are not constantly innovating. Maybe the thing that attracted people to you first was your innovative. You used to go to Gikomba and get the best. Yeah. But now you're you're sending other people who are not getting that they're not exporting that unique that uniqueness. Yeah. So they're like, oh, just we started so well, but now there's a thing that's so mundane. Yeah. And sometimes it's actually a problem of success. Because sometimes you find somebody you become so successful. So Josephine events is doing all the big events yeah. and your clients are coming to you and you don't want to say no, you don't have capacity. Mm-hmm. So you end up outsourcing it to somebody and not, else yeah. and somebody else just ruins the experience, yeah. but they don't know you that you outsourced. So it spoils so your it's brand. You. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that part of protecting your brand, sometimes it's okay to tell a client we are a bit overwhelmed mm-hmm. and we uh, push it to next week. Yeah. It's much better than you trying to outsource it in Yamaji, mm-hmm. then the experience is so bad, then they're coming for your neck. Then in that, the next day, they are gone. They are gone, exactly. So it's also good to tell clients to manage expectations. That uh, Yes, uh, we love you. Thank you so much for coming. This week, we are a bit overwhelmed. Yeah. And we only have like three bakers. Mm-hmm. So kindly, can we be only accepting orders maybe one day before yeah. or two days? Clients appreciate that much more than you trying to call. <laughs> so I think sometimes that desire, and it goes back to the lack of patience. Okay. You want to make money. Now, now, now. Now, now, yeah. now. So yeah. You want to fulfill all the desires of the market without having the capacity. So you yeah. find your brand now starts collapsing. So that's also another very common. Mm-hmm. common. So it's almost like a, a, a problem with when, you, when you become successful in one area because people are coming to you because you're good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, and what of what would you say of maybe I'm I'm just giving a scenario here. I've I've woken up today and I've decided, well, I can't find a job. I've been jobless for ten years, yeah. And going back to the biashara of selling clothes, I because I didn't have even the capital, I decided to go to the bank right. and um, took a loan, and then went and bought stock, uh, but then barely can 
So mm-hmm. I have taken a hit there. I go back home, ask my mom for something she treasures, I sell it or or she loans it to me. Something happens. Yeah, so you constantly, you know, your before your business even starts, it has gone negative. It has gone negative. How do I come back from that? And was the mistake taking a loan from the bank fast or how how do I even work around that situation? Before you take a very big loan from a bank, it's very important that as I say going back again to the prototype. You know it's easy to get your 10k 20k and to do something small and prove if it's not working at that small scale don't go and go and get a million from a bank because you're actually setting yourself up for a disaster so the patient capital you can get from your family and friends if it's if it, if you can make it work there then now it's easy to say okay you see I did this and it it's worked so I can get a bit more maybe this time I can get 50k hundred so go gradually a lot of people go looking for that one million shilling loan and the business model is still not clear so the and banks are very impatient so I keep saying before you go to banks or big investors yeah. use the some people call it bootstrapping the little funds that is available to you that is not very difficult to get mm-hmm. use that prove prove it can work with it that, can work with that. Okay. And if you can't, ask yourself, okay, there's something wrong. Never go for big money when you've not proved yourself with the small money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, never go for big money. <laughs> <laughs> when you've not proved when yourself. When you've not proved yourself, yes. With the small money. And I think that's where a lot of us go wrong. You, you want to, you know, prove, I can, I can get a loan from the bank. And probably you haven't even prototyped what your business is all about. Um, coming back to you guys on YouTube, um, Rebecca is asking, what are some of the businesses that young people can start with very little capital? What are some of the businesses that young people can start? Well, you can start quite a bit. In fact, what you've talked about when you are prototyping, almost very many businesses. Yeah. Think of somebody who's into digital marketing. Mm-hmm. Let's say I want to be a digital marketer. I just want to be making nice posters. On freelance basis. Exactly. Yeah. What is the cost of making a poster? You ask yourself. And you'll find even online nowadays is free software. Yeah. I know there's one, I can't remember the name. but Canva. It's Canva. Yeah. Actually, our first logo, I designed it personally. Yeah. On Canva. Yeah. Our very, before I could even build to getting a social media expert, mm-hmm. we already had a logo, which I designed yeah. within less than half an hour. Yeah. On Canva for free. Mm-hmm. So what the brand guy will charge you for 10K you can do it yourself. <laughs> you can do it yourself. <laughs> you can learn Photoshop as well. <laughs> you can learn so So a, a, a good entrepreneur should be able to roll up their sleeves mm-hmm. and say, yes, you can get a logo for 10K, but Canva yeah. can give me something to shikilia this business until we can afford that yeah. social media guy who will just maybe add a few <laughs> small things. Yeah. And Canva, for by the way, it's amazing. It is. And stuff. So I think, um, think of the digital marketing expert. You make a logo. How much is it to make a, a, a poster? Very, it's not very expensive. Mm-hmm. Actually, just your data bundles. Yeah. And maybe you are living in your parents' house. So there's no even no rent you're yeah. paying. Yeah. So really, the only cost maybe you have is your bundles. Mm-hmm. Then you can say, I'll be doing these things for schools. So you go to schools around here, go to Shepherds Junior here, say, when you guys have a poster for an event, maybe you be call, doing me. It. call yeah. me. Yeah. You do it and you say, okay, I'll be charging for this amount. Yeah. So you find it's, you're already making profit at such a small scale. Yeah. It's just people say, oh, wow, Shepard Jr. has really good posters. Who does for them? Mm-hmm. So Wanja and Kim, now want, yeah. they come to you. Buruburu High School, they come. Mm-hmm. So it's really, again, doing the small thing well yeah. and allowing it to look good and make make business sense before mm-hmm. you, you scale up. So the cost of business, again, can be as expensive as you want it to be. That graphic designer could have, again, gone the biggest office, yeah. gotten the latest MacBook, gotten the latest in subscription software, yeah. all things that you do not require, require now. now. So always ask yourself, what do I need now, 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 now? Not what I'll need next year. Yeah. What do I need this week? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Top was our, um, Becky, I hope your question has been answered. Okay. Other, other businesses that we can... I mean, I keep saying there are as many businesses as there are people and talents. Yeah. 
So it's somebody to really ask themselves, what is my talent? Maybe I like hair. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can start importing. We yeah. find the ladies who love weaves and wigs. And wigs yeah. So they can do research and they say, you know, everybody seems to be getting their weaves from this country. Mm -hmm. But from my research, I'm seeing this country also has better. Also has better weaves, yeah. Exactly. So there are as many businesses as there are people and talents. Yeah. There is no limit. So the quick question, I always throw the ball back to their court is, what are your interests? Mm -hmm. What you, you just don't want to go into a business for the sake of making money. You also want to have a bit of passion. And you can always tell a business where the owner came purely to make money. There was no yeah. other desire yeah. besides making money. And you can tell somebody who actually has a passion. Mm -hmm. You can look at two schools and one, the school owner, really had no passion besides making profit. Yeah. But you can tell one who is really beyond making money, love, cares. education, yeah. and cares. Yeah. So always throw the ball back to their court and say, what are your talents? What are the things that I ask give you goosebumps? Mm -hmm. What are the things that keep you excited? And keep Those you awake at night. Keep you awake. Yeah. Those are the best business. Because when you start businesses, it's tough. I won't lie to you. But when you're doing something that you have an interest it really takes away a big chunk of that uh, burden yeah. that you might face. Okay. But when you're in something that you're not really interested, then Kajo come and frustrate you. Mm -hmm. you say, I'm quitting. You're this done. <laughs> you're like, I him, Maisha Siango. Because there's nothing else <laughs> yeah. that you, you liked in that you're, industry. <laughs> you had only gone for money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Hi, Pinches is, a, is saying very helpful information all through. Thank you so much, Hi, Pinches. Rebecca is saying, when running, a sub, um, when running a service business, should you go for full-time staff or should you contract them when there's work? Again, now that's part of management. A good manager should be able to balance supply and demand. So let's say you are running a catering business and you are really starting off. So you don't even have any client. It would be foolhardy to have full-time people and you don't even have a single oh, client. Yeah. So it's good now you start identifying people and say, let's do it on a gig by basis. gig basis. Uh -huh. And if people like you, yeah. and if you do it for six months, mm -hmm. if you do it for six months, yeah. then maybe we can consider uh, an internship, then a full-time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people really go to just getting a full-time. You find somebody, because you have no clients, somebody's idle. Yeah. And, and that's all I say, try and balance the business with uh, the supply and the demand side. When you get two, three clients mm -hmm. and they are every two, three months they are calling you, then you said definitely need to start having full-time people. Full people. So it's about yeah. balance, balancing the needs of the business and the demands of the market. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, this conversation can go on and on and on. I know there's so much, <laughs> there's so much to cover in terms of business. I hope when we call upon you to come back, you you'll be ready to you know, share with us this wealth of information that you have. But thank you so much for coming. My director is telling me to wind up this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming to the show. And thank you for... Yanni, I, um, I don't think this information was for my viewers. But some of it was for me also. I have learned so much. And I hope you guys back at home, wherever you're watching us from, that... Um, what, there's something that you, you'll be able to implement from what we have um, talked about today and that will help you in growing your business, move from one point to another. You know, we want all of us to excel, you know. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's yeah. been a pleasure to be here. Maybe one thing that I might have forgotten to say mm -hmm. is once you've discovered your talent, yeah. please make effort in developing it. Please make so You can have a natural talent, but... If you can dedicate every day a few minutes mm -hmm. to developing it, yeah. it will make even your marketing easier in terms of getting clients. Mm -hmm. So whatever you choose, try and nurture it yes. every day yeah. so that it becomes really uh, the natural point of marketing. Okay. If anyone out there wants to reach you, maybe touch base with you on how, how to grow their business or how to run their business, is that? possible can they reach you absolutely my yeah. twitter handle is uh, at k gishinga mm -hmm. uh, our company handle is at mentoria econ mentoria yeah, mentoria -E. economics uh -huh. so you can find it on all the platforms just okay. google or facebook mentoria is m-e-n-t-o-r-i-a -E yeah 
Mentoria Economics exactly. on, on Twitter. Our, on Twitter. Uh-huh. And our website is mentoria.co.ke. Okay. And from our website, you can find all our social media handles. Yeah. And we, um, every Friday, we have these discussions on KTN. Okay. So they can, uh, every Friday at 3 p.m. on a show called Business Today. Okay. We just look at events in the economy and business. Yeah every Friday on KTN News. Okay. So they can also be looking at that. And feel free to uh, direct message me at kgishinga. My mm-hmm. email is at kgishinga, uh, kgishinga.gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And so feel free. So many channels to reach me. Okay. Yeah. There you guys have it. Um, you, can, you have all the information that you need to reach Ken. And I hope you're going to reach out to him to, you know, grow your business and uh, thrive. Thank you so much, Ken. Sansana. All right.